Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to continue my walk along the old leak to Macclesfield Railway. I'm just looking where to go on the map using the table that came free with my larder. What I've had to do, I've had to drive today because as we saw yesterday we got to the river and that was where the line left Staffordshire and entered Cheshire. So we're now in Cheshire, driven up to Cheshire in my larder because the mile of track beyond there is inaccessible to the public. I'm now in the car park of Bosley or Bosley, I'm not sure which way it's pronounced, but the Methodist Church. So what I'm going to do is um, just have a quick look at the Methodist Church and then I'll have to stop this clip, I'll have to run back to the car, grab the map and we'll walk off down the hill and find the station. So it's quite an attractive little Methodist Church. Now the village is some distance away. It is sort of just over the hill, over there, it must be about a mile away, and um, there is an Anglican parish church up there. So it's not a huge, didn't serve a huge amount of people, but they seem to have built this Methodist church. I'm going to guess, because I can't see a date stone on it, about the time when they opened the railway line, and the railway opened in 1849. So whether they thought a village would grow up around here, because although the railway here didn't have that many passengers it had a lot of um, freight traffic so we'll talk about that in a minute just see towering above us that is the cloud what we'll have to do I mentioned it in yesterday's video I have to go up there one day certainly make a video because it would be worthy of it anyway but we could perhaps pinpoint some of these places from up on the cloud so we'll do that some point so anyway I'm going to go back to my car I'm going to fold up the map and then I'm going to walk down and show you the site of the railway station So we're now going to continue our walk down the hill from the Methodist Church. This house behind me, this is called Station House, so this must possibly have been where the station master would have lived, although it's built in a completely different style to the one up at Rushton. So maybe it wasn't actually built when the railway was built. Maybe the current owner has just decided to call it Station House, I'm not sure. So the road we're on, if you were to go from Bosley or Bosley to the village, the original village, by road, this is the way... You'd go up the hill, round the corner, turn left onto the main road that runs from Leek to Macclesfield. Um, and it's probably over a mile. I mean, it wouldn't take long in the car, it'd only take about five minutes. But it was would have been quite a long way to have walked from the village itself. It would be quite nice to walk up to the village, but we won't do that today. Maybe one day we will, because it's um, already evening. It's a lovely evening, but... Still, we've got a railway to explore, so we won't explore the railway as well. So look, as you're coming down here, see it says heavy goods vehicles, plant vehicles crossing. And we are coming to the site of the old level crossing, and indeed the site of the old railway station. Now when I did my research, things have changed a bit, because I mentioned it was rather industrial area. When I looked, there was all factories here, they appear to have demolished most of them. But this area here, as you can see, suddenly the road goes just that little bit flat before carrying on down this is where the railway line would have crossed so that's looking towards Macclesfield that is looking towards Leek I don't think the doors are going to open and a train's going to come out but um, let's have a look at these abandoned mills which appear to be in the process of demolition so the station I believe would have been just there so yeah you can see they really are well underway with the demolition look at that you can see piles of rubble um, it's, um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not sure what's going to happen. If anyone knows what the plans are, a lot of wood chips in there. So it does say private property and everything, no trespassing. So we will stick to the road. So the route, trains would have come across here and the station would have been here somewhere. Now I'm just trying to see if I can see. It says trespassers will be prosecuted. So we're certainly not going beyond those gates. But from what I can see, it doesn't look like there's anything left of the station at all. But what I thought we'll do is we'll walk down the road through the hoarding each side um, and we'll just see what we can see because there was the path up to the village which is public footpath so we should still be able to get onto that and that will cross the trap bed so we might be able to see some more of the trap bed there. You can see there's a CCTV camera. If any, there's probably some security guard in an office now watching, thinking, what is that guy doing? Anyway, um, that looks like that was possibly the factory's offices. And that building is built probably where the railway station would have been. I, 
imagine the station building would have been there. I think there's some, well I can see there's some cottages here. So these could have been a combination of railway workers or mill workers. But the other interesting thing about this mill is it had its own narrow gauge railway, which opened in 1887, which went from here to the canal. Now we will come to the canal later on. So it'd be interesting if we can find any remains of that, because I've been told there is a cutting you might be able to see, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just going to, there's uh, traffic, temporary traffic lights, so I'm quite safe to stand in the middle of the road. You can see where most of the factories have gone. There's a building here with a hole in the roof. So it'd be a shame to think they're going to demolish that. I don't know. What I think with this one, I might have to come back in a few years' time and see what's happened. And then there's these cottages, which look like if they weren't derelict they could be quite nice cottages but they certainly need some work that one's had some double glazed windows but look at the windows on that one and indeed those ones um, there's that smell you know when you walk past the building where it's just been demolished of sort of rubble and everything um, so there is the end of the site I'm just gonna I don't think we can get any closer but let's just have a quick look here so yeah signs everywhere saying private property the river is just down there, but that gives us quite a good view there of the extent, not only of the size of the mill, but the demolition project. And there's the cottages. Now, the footpath that should take us up onto the trap bed should be about here somewhere. So let's go and have a look, see what we can find. So the railway line would have run behind the cottages. You can hear the river quite clearly now. So where is the footpath, Christian? That's a funny thing, look. Someone has made a face or snowman almost out of tyres. That footpath should be here, but maybe it is further down the lane. I'll have to go and have a look. What I'll do is I'll leave this clip here, and when I found the footpath, um, we'll carry on. So I'm going to leave you with the smiling snowman made from tyres. So I've just come down the lane slightly from the tyre snowman, he was just up there. We're now running alongside the river and it looks as though there might be some more demolition of this old factory going on up here, but it should be down here. I was thinking the path up to the village was just there, but I think it's going to be a couple of hundred yards further down the road, so I can see more hoarding ahead but no buildings. So whether they've demolished some more factories, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to have a look on Street View, because when I looked on Street View doing my research, all of those factories were there. So what's obviously happened is they've since demolished it. Um, it be very interesting to see what they do put in the place and what comes to the site of the railway station. So I think we'll definitely have to revisit this one in due course once we've seen you know what's become of the site so now the river leaves parts company with a road and i said there's some more hoarding oh good i can see a public footpath sign ahead which is what i was hoping for so there appears to be some more sort of light industrial units here and the footpath that i've been looking for should be just past this building here so the footpath is how residents from the village would have got down to the railway station whether they had to then walk along the lane i'm not sure or whether there was a path parallel to the railway but my reasoning for taking you over up that footpath and over the railway line is so we can have a better look at the site at the actual track bed itself so more industrial places i'm not quite sure what all of this is there's lots of big silos and stuff it's and the footpath actually goes right through the middle of it so this time we can and the road goes over the river so we might as well have a quick look on the road bridge before we go and find the trap bed so let's just have a look at the river and then soon we should come to the canal we might even see it i'm not sure so here is the river on one side if we have a look on the other side well, the river's a bit overgrown, but you get quite a good view. Now, I can see what I'm looking for. If you look across over there, you can see an embankment. Now, that is not a railway. That's the canal. 
and that's where we're heading for. So probably what I'm going to do, I think there's a footpath running off up those fields. When I've been up to the railway track, I might come back this way if there's not a route along the railway, and I'll go across the field on the public footpath up to the canal, and then we can see where the railway line crossed the canal. Because even if we can't get onto the trap bed, we should be able to go under it. So, as I said, there's a public footpath here. So let's follow it, see where we go. Through, it's quite strange really going through the middle of an industrial factory. And it certainly has this abandoned feeling. I mean, I'm not doing urban exploration, so I'm not going to start climbing up and everything, but some people probably would find that quite fun, but then you could risk getting into trouble, which I'm not overly wanting to do. Ah, now this is interesting. I can see that we may not be able to get onto the trap bed because there's a bridge. So we're going to go under the trap bed. Now whether there'll be a way onto the trap bed, I'm not sure, but this path does take you all the way up to the village. It's a bit muddy today. Um, so, there is a kind of a, not much of a proper fence, but there is a sort of a fence, so effectively stopping you going up onto the embankment, but at least we can go under the trap bed. So what it looks like happens here is the footpath carries on up here. Let's just go through this gate. So there's a good view of the bridge work. It's a bit obscured by trees, I agree. Let's just go up here. This isn't a footpath. I mean, if we go up here, we might see, we can see where the track bed went. There's an electric fence. I won't open these electric gates. So there we are. That is the track bed just there. You can see how the track went into a cutting and the station would have been a couple of hundred yards the other side of that cutting. So now what I'm going to do is head back to the river bridge and um, let's see where I'll come to next. So, as I mentioned in the last trip, I'd come down to where the bridge was over the River Dane and follow that footpath. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So the bridge is just there. Now the railway line would have ran just over there where the trees are. So you've got the river first, the other side of this field, and then the railway, and as I mentioned, up ahead of us, the embankment you can see is the canal. So the railway must have been higher up because I believe the railway went over the canal. That's the one thing we're definitely going to do today. We're at least going to find the bridge where the railway went over the canal. But it does appear to all be private land, which is a bit of a shame because I can't really see what you can do with a linear piece of land. I suppose tractors can drive up and down it. It'd be nice though if it was open as a public footpath, you know, all the way. So what happens? I think the river turns and comes along here in front of us so there should be an aqueduct up here somewhere so although this is supposed to be a railway video it is going to feature some canal as well it is my intention at some point i don't know when to do the canals so we can we'll you know when we do that we'll cover things more like locks and acts there's going to be quite a lot of locks in this area but i'm not going to go into too much detail on them in this one because as mentioned it's primarily about the railway. So the one thing though I don't know about, and I'm wondering if any of my viewers can help me, is that there was this two foot six gauge railway line which ran for about three quarters of a mile from the mill to the canal. So it must have run along the same sort of route as the Stanley gauge line. So it opened in 1887 and closed in 1929. So chances of there being any pictures of it are probably quite unlikely because people on the whole didn't take pictures there have been just so many industrial railways that those who took pictures probably weren't didn't think it would be you know that worthy of taking a picture it's a bit like i suppose what would it be today you probably wouldn't worry about taking a picture of an internet router in someone's house because it's not that you know it's not exciting is it um unless you're really into computers. So chances are no one ever did document anything. But if anyone does know of any links to any pictures of the railway, stroke tramway, then please do comment and tell me. The other thing I don't know is, was it worked by steam or was it worked by horses? 
I'm sort of thinking going by the relatively short distance it's possible it could have been worked by horses because it's quite a flat route but then there's a chance it could have also been worked by steam because with various factories not too far such as Stoke-on-Trent and Manchester um, you know there was no short supply of builders of steam locomotives so again if you can answer any of those questions how was the railway powered are there any pictures of it and where exactly did it go then please do comment and tell me and it's possible in the future as well as seeing what happens at the site of the factory we could perhaps sort of do the future because then it will be the present and more of the past so I'm just going to carry on now up to the canal literally walking towards the sun um, and when I find some more things to show you I shall um, show you them we might even find something obvious that is the trap bed of the two foot six gauge line I'm not sure so wait and see Well, that's been a bit of an adventure. Well, it is called Henry's Adventure, so I suppose what you expect. I've been climbing through all this Himalayan balsam weed, but I've made it to the canal. Now, I thought I'd show you from this side. You can see there's an overflow down there. I could just glimpse the aqueduct through the trees, but there was nowhere I could go to get a decent shot of it. So, at the moment, I can't show you what it looks like, but other than it looks pretty impressive. But here we are now. We've come to Bridge 57, so... We're going to go over the canal, along the canal, and um, over the aqueduct as well. And soon, maybe even now, not quite, no, but we shall be able to find where the railway crosses the canal. So there's not much to see on that side. The path I'm on carries on that way, but we're going to leave that path now. And we're going to go over this stile that's not really a stile, and down onto the canal towpath. I'll just um, tell you a little bit about Himalayan balsam weed. Basically, it's one of those plants. It looks quite nice. It has quite a sweet smell. It was brought over here by the Victorians to be an ornamental plant, and now it's just nothing but a nightmare to anyone who works in countryside management. I've, during my time working for the National Trust, I've spent numerous times clearing Himalayan balsam weed. So, um, yeah, so it can be, it looks nice, but it's a bit of a nightmare. It's quite attractive seen really along here and we've got to complete it there is a barge coming along so I'm now walking over this very narrow um, boardwalk I suppose it is over the overflow because the overflow has water on it so it's pretty bit slippery so the water off the canal runs off down there and it must join the river so let's just get across here we should pass the boat in a minute so as I said it is supposed to be a railway video but it's um turned into more of a canal video at least for the moment until we get back to the trap bed it's a very nice scene there if, if you excuse the nettles in the foreground so the canal boat just coming along very very nice scene something so calm about seeing a canal boat So now the canal boat's past us. We are just coming up to the aqueduct now, so we should perhaps get um, quite a good view from the aqueduct. There's another canal boat, Northern Sol. They always have quite nice names. And uh, for those of you who are interested, there's the number there. I don't take canal boat numbers. Maybe when I've seen every train in the world, I might start doing boats, but. At the moment, there's enough trains I haven't seen, so I'm not going to start that just yet, if ever. We might be able to see the aqueduct here, because we're just coming up to it. So let's have a look. What can we see? So, uh, there's this um, cast iron fence. Now, well, that is it's pretty high. So it looks like it's just a one arch job, but it is quite high and quite spectacular. Ideally, if we could get down into that field, we'd get a really nice picture, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. But have a look out there. Shows you, we are pushing about, what, 60 odd feet above the river now. Not as high as Pont Suckley Aqueduct, but you know, we are quite high and it's a nice view. 
Thank you. <laughs> so I am now going to try and find the railway track bed. Passing a few more boats on the way. So the railway line must have been in front of us. Probably before those trees grew up, you could have once stood here and you'd have seen trains along the railway line. So that's how the scene would have been once. And I can now see the fields I came across and the factory in the distance. Little dog there. So it's a very, very pleasant place for an evening walk. I've, um, I haven't come here before. But as I said, one day I'll do the whole of the canal either on foot or on a boat. And um, we'll, we'll see more of it. I do seem to be making all the um, canal owners dogs bark. Right, what can we see? Oh, yes, I can see what I want to see. Well, firstly, I can see a lock. And secondly, I can see the railway bridge over the canal. So, the question is, are we going to be able to get onto the track bed? But if we can't, at least we've got this far. Now, there's two things I can do, really. If I can get onto the track bed, then I will. And I'll um, walk along as far as I can go. So eventually joins the line from Stoke-on-Trent up through Macclesfield to Stockport. Um, joins the main line. And there was a station called North Road, which would be quite good if we could feature that. So obviously, being an operational railway, we won't be going down onto the track, but there's a road bridge. So I'm thinking we can look over the road bridge but that is probably about a mile from here so what I might do although I'm now probably about a mile from where I parked the car I might just walk back and drive up there because there might not be a lot to make a video on other than say look this is the site of the station and we might be able to get maybe a passing pendolino I'm not sure um, well we should be able to get a train passing so here is the lot so this is I believe this is the beginning of a flight of locks so one day we'll have to make a video on this lock flight but although we're walking past it it isn't actually really the subject of the video but what we can see here is quite clearly see the trap bed the bridge and an embankment but can we get onto it is the question I'll have to have a look in a minute. I'm not sure. It doesn't look like... I mean, there's no public footpath marked on the map. And I believe it was somewhere around here that that two-foot gauge... Two-foot six, rather, inch gauge railway line came to. OK, so here's the bridge. Double track formation. No footpath there. But that said, there's another lock here. So we might be able to at least get to get a better view again, no footpath. I think the narrow gauge line must have come to somewhere round here if that was once a wharf, or is it just an area for boats to wait to pass through the locks? So we've now there's the railway line, trap bed, embankment, orchard lock this one's called. So we're now on to the lock flight. I think what I'll do is um, I'll leave this clip here and I'm going to carry on up the lock flight, I've decided, to the site of the station purely because um, we're running parallel to the railway so I should be able to see more of it. I won't do too much on the lock flight because like I said another day I'll come back and I'll make a video on the lock flight itself. So there we are, there. there's the railway bridge over the canal so I'm quite pleased we found that. <laughs> 